Right, so we were looking at the canonical ensemble and we derived the connection between thermodynamics and saying that once you calculate the partition function z, then the free energy, the Helmholtz free energy is given by minus kVt ln of z. And once you know this relation, <coughs> one can calculate all the other thermodynamic quantities. There is one more thing that I want, want to highlight over here that one in the way of calculating the partition function, we had come to this expression that you see over here. Okay. What you notice is that kBt square, this exponential factor has minus delta E square to kBt square over C. Now, this necessarily means that C must be a positive quantity. <clears throat> so, the specific heat is positive because otherwise the fluctuations would diverge because if specific heat is negative, this becomes a plus and the fluctuations will diverge. So, the larger fluctuations are more probable. So, thermodynamics also gives you this same conclusion that the response functions are positive, but it derives it from the stability of the thermodynamic potential. On the other hand, in statistical mechanics, we come to the same conclusion, but from the viewpoint of the fluctuations, right. Now, f is minus kBT ln z. So, let us write this as f bar. The average energy is sum over E 1 by z E e to the power minus e over kBt, where the sum is again over all states. <coughs> so, I note that within the sum, I can manipulate this part by writing del del t of e to the power minus e over kBt. And this is going to give me a 1 by kBt square, which we have seen in the earlier derivation. So, I, if I multiply this with kBt square, then the, this expression is identical to the one over here. If you are not convinced, you can easily expand this. We can write down this as, if I operate the derivative, it is e, sorry, e to the power minus e over kBt minus e over kB times del del t of 1 over t times kb t square right <coughs> so this gives me sum over e to the power minus e over kb t e over kb t square oops times kb t square and i recover the expression e e to the power minus e over kb t so therefore the average energy is 1 over z sum over del del t of e to the power minus e over k b t right times k b t square. So, I can bring the k b t square outside and I can write this as 1 over z del del t of sum over all states e to the power minus e over k b t. Please do not, sorry, del del capital T. Do not take the derivative over here because z is also a function of t, then that is the wrong calculation you are doing. So, k b t square 1 over z, this is del z del t, which is k b t square del del t of ln z, right. <coughs> Good, but ln z is minus f over k b t. So, one can replace this over here and take this further, which means I can write down this as k b t square del del t of minus f over k b t. But I have to be careful that this, there will be two terms because f is also a function of t, it is a function of t, v and n and in the denominator there is a 1 by t sitting. Good. The entropy 
is E bar minus T S bar. So the entropy is F sorry E bar minus F bar T S bar. <coughs> Let's see K B T square del del T of ln of Z that is my expression for E bar minus this becomes a plus KBT ln of Z. So this I can write down del del T sorry, of T ln Z. I can put a KB over here and then so now I can take KBT common if I take KBT common the first term is del del T of ln Z plus ln Z which is KBT del del T of T ln Z keep so a further more simplification happens if I just put T del del T of KBT ln Z which is minus T del F del t that is your entropy right t times s therefore s is minus del f del t right recall when we did thermodynamics we had written f as a function of t v and n which is e minus t s well in thermodynamics it was u minus t s so that df was du minus tds minus s dt right and tds du minus tds so our tds was for a hydrostatic system let's worry about the hydrostatic system for the timing uh, was plus pdv so the du minus tds is minus pdv so i can replace this as minus s dt minus pdv and therefore you immediately see that s is minus del f del t so we are all going in the right direction good <coughs> now let's look at examples of how to handle canonical ensemble so first thing that we will be worried about is throughout this we are only going to be worried about about non-interacting systems right now when you have a non-interacting system then the Hamiltonian can be written down in terms of single particle Hamiltonians right so that the partition function the single particle part partition function so well let's see the partition function the total for the whole system is all states e to the power minus hi over kbt right now <coughs> introduce k1 by kbt as beta so that beta inverse is therefore kbt which means this one all states e to the power minus beta hi sum over hi sorry this has to be sum over hi but the sum now breaks into products so all states for particle 1 all states for particle 2 so on and so forth but each of this is what is called a single particle partition function q so your total partition function is q to the power n right 
if the particles are indistinguishable, so for indistinguishable particle, Z is Q to the power N over N factorial. Once again, one has to realize that for discrete systems, <coughs> the free energy is ln of Z. Sorry, uh, not for the, not only for the discrete system, for all the system, my free energy is k minus kBT ln Z. So the Z has to be a dimensionless quantity, and we know how to do it for a ideal for systems where my state can take continuous values good so we take the example of a two level system that we had done in the microcanonical ensemble here each particle can be in the energy level 0 and epsilon so our first they are non-interacting whether the, if particle 1 is in ground, uh, in energy level 0, particle 2, particle 3 can also be there because there is no interaction between 0 and 1 and 2. They are independent of each other in whatever level they are. <coughs> so my single particle partition function is sum over all states e to the power minus beta h i and hi is individual particles is epsilon times ni if you recall the total energy e was sum over ni times hi right so this means that the single particle partition function can be either one for corresponding to when the particle is in the ground state with energy zero or minus beta epsilon therefore the n particle partition function we will now introduce a subscript n so to indicate that this is an n particle for parti partition function this is q to the power n over n factorial if they are indistinguishable if they are distinguishable then this n factorial does not come in so that we have 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon raised to the power n The Helmholtz free energy is minus kBT ln of Zn, which is minus n kBT ln 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon. F is an extensive quantity, which is evident from the right hand side. Correct? The energy is going to be. kBt squared del del t of ln z and ln z is n times 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon. So this is del del t of n 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon times kb t square kb t square is n del del t is going to give me e to the power minus beta epsilon times del del t of minus beta epsilon so this is kb t square n epsilon e to the power minus beta epsilon yeah this is not right so we now want to calculate the energy now the energy we did derive the expression it's kbt square del del t of ln of zn and ln of zn is n 
so this is not the right expression ln of zn is n ln 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon so this becomes n kb t square del del t of ln 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon which is n kb t square 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon times e to the power minus beta epsilon times del del t of minus beta epsilon so that <coughs> this becomes minus n epsilon kbt square e to the power minus beta epsilon 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon correct good <coughs> then it's a derivative of del del beta beta is 1 over kb t del beta del t is minus 1 over kb t square so i can replace this quantity this derivative by minus 1 over kb t square so that my average energy e has a very nice and elegant form which is n epsilon e to the power minus beta epsilon 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon if you recall this is exactly the form that we got when we did when we treated this problem using the microcanonical approach right s i want to now calculate the entropy s is minus del f del t and i just now did the helmholtz free energy which is n k b del del t of t ln 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon note that if i have the energy i can also calculate the specific heat by using del e del t right this i leave it to you as an exercise but this is also just simple calculus it's going to be ln 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon plus t 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon e to the power minus beta epsilon minus epsilon and then i'll have del beta del t which is going to be n k b ln of 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon plus t e to the power epsilon beta epsilon 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon <coughs> 1 by kb t square the minus epsilon from here and del beta del t will also carry a 1 this will cancel out so that this becomes n k b ln 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon plus epsilon over k b t e to the power minus beta epsilon 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon and this is the expression for the entropy one can of course ask that look I want s as a function of e and n that itself is going to be a complicated procedure because here then you have to uh, from this expression that you see over here and from this expression you have to eliminate the temperature to write down s as a function of e and n it is still a dwevel and then finally you arrive at the fundamental relation that we that is very soft after 